Hello everyone, my name is Benji Cook. I was a Google Summer of Code student this year for the Blendle Foundation and my project was to improve the workflow regarding motion capture data allowing users and artists to retarget the animation, edit the animation before and after retargeting, and generally improving the way Blendle handles motion capture data. Uh, this In this video I'll showcase all the new functionality show you how to use it and give you ideas of what what the add-on can do. So as I mentioned, the work was bundled in a single Python add-on. So the first step that we're going to do is activate that add-on. So we'll just go to user preferences and under add-ons, animation, you can see that there is the add-on. So now I'm going to open up a simple blend file. It contains a simple rig with a simple stick guy. Very simple. No constraints, no control bones. And this type of rig is the best way to show the so off uh, most of the functionality. If you plan on working a lot with motion capture data, I find it's easier to work with a simpler rig because in any case most of your animation is being done by the motion capture, so you don't need the complex uh, rig structure that keyframe animation needs. However, in the later tutorials I'll show how you can also obviously retarget animations to those types of rigs. Um, so the second step we're going to do is import a motion capture file, BVH format, and this file is from the Carnegie Mellon database, very large motion capture database. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with it. And if you Google, you can find places where it was converted to BVH format, and that's what we're going to use. So I'm just going to import the file. It takes a second. And, there, and we've imported the file, and there it is. It's a simple walk animation from series six of the Carnegie Mellon database. Uh, I'm just going to set the scene to 500 frames because that's roughly the length of the animation. Uh, so the first issue, as we can see, is that the animation is walking up the z-axis instead of across the y-axis. That happens because different 3D packages use different axis systems. And under the three new panels that are added by the add-on, under the object section, of the of the properties window, you can see those mocap tools, mocap fixes, and extra mocap tools. So under mocap tools, which is the first kind of stop along our workflow, we're going to just hit fix BVH axis animation orientation. So now we can see that it's going the right way. Uh, the second step is to scale down the performer, so we can easily see the two rigs next to each other. going to hide the mesh and select the user skeleton. Now throughout this uh, tutorial and in general throughout the documentation of the user manual and basically everything I've written about this project, we refer to the source animation, that is the motion capture file, as the performer and the user rig, your rig, as the end user skeleton. So if you come across those terms, that's what you need to know. This is the performer, this is the end user. It says it here and in another couple places. So we're just going to hit auto scale performer. And now it's been scaled down roughly to match the size so we can easily see them on the same screen. I'm just going to move him a little out of the way as well. And now we can move him. So another good step to do is activate names on both of the rigs. So we can easily go to the next step, which is defining the hierarchy between the two armatures. In order to retarget, the system needs to know which bones match up to which bones in each of the hierarchies, because every rig is different. Your rig might be named a certain way. Different motion capture sources name their rigs in different ways. There's no real general guidelines. So you have to do this manually. You can speed up the process slightly by hitting guess hierarchy mapping. And that filled in some of the forms. As you can see, as soon as we selected both of the rigs with the end user rig being active, 
we have a list of all the bones in the performer rig, performer rig, all the list of all the bones, and now we just have to match up what what goes with what in terms of what correspond, which bones correspond with which bones between the performer and the end user. Uh, I'll be explaining what these buttons and these buttons do in a moment. Uh, but first, let's start to set up the hierarchy. So as we can see here, lower back on this armature kind of goes with torso in this armature. They're both in the same place. So we're just going to go to lower back and find torso. Spine goes with chest. We can also obviously type in because this is a render dialog. Now, another thing this system allows you to do is we target a number of bones to a single bone in the end user. As you can see here, those are spine one, neck, neck one, and head. But in our rig, we only really have head. So what we can do is we can just we target all these three bones, four bones including the head, to our single head bone. And it will kind of blend the, all the rotations together. To speed up retargeting, what we can do is we can select the head bone, and we can press this button, which is select the bone for faster mapping. And that it automatically fills in. It's often quicker than typing in, well that's a, although that's an option as well. So the guess ma mapping kind of helped us along by figuring out the shoulders and the high arm to left arm correspondence. So we just have to rig the low arm. And I'm also going to include the hand. You don't have to retarget every single bone. So I'm just going to leave the left, left, left thumb, left finger base, and left hand in index bones unmapped. Uh, that won't affect the retargeting as we really don't have fingers here. We don't even have a hand bone. But I like retargeting these two bones to the single bone because it tends to look a little better. Uh, defining correspondence is often a process of trial and error, as you'll see in a moment. Uh, so now we can just go down the list and oops, continue our work. As you can see, selecting the bones is much quicker. If you use the uh, auto guess, you'll want to kind of go over the entire list to make sure it didn't make any mistakes. It's still a bit of an experimental issue because it's a very difficult thing to figure out what goes with what. The best way is to have the artist do it. All right, so now that the mapping's done, we can hit Save Mapping. Uh, and then what that does is it saves the data onto your rig. So if you import a another motion capture file, which we'll do in a few minutes, uh, it will save the work you've done with the retargeting, and all you have to hit is load mapping, and it will remember everything. So if, you if you're retargeting a number of animations from the same source, this really speeds things along. All right, so we have a couple of other options here. Uh, such as the name we want to assign to it. I'm just going to leave it as the default 0601. Uh, frame skip. Frame skip is, uh, as you can see, the amount of frames to skip for previewing retargets quickly. So as this is the first kind of first try of the retarget, I'm going to set this to 10. It makes it go much quicker. And we'll get to what advanced retarget is in a moment. So I'm just going to exit pose mode and hit retarget. And it did that very, very quickly because it's only doing every 10 frames. So the retarget looks good. This type of error is due to the fact that we're doing every 10 frames. So you don't have to worry about that, those snappings. You can see that they always happen on kind of uneven frames. Um, but I, what I do want to check is how the, mesh the form mesh looks. Now, as you can see, due to differences between the rolling of the bones and the source of the animation and your end user rig, uh, which is an issue that's difficult to predict, uh, we can see like this type of twist. But have no fear, we can fix that. We're just going to do undo. I'm going to show the mesh. Undo the retarget. There we go. Show the mesh. And here we have fixed twist on this bone. So just to show you again what our problems with the twisting was, you can see that the hips 
are twisted and the shoulders are twisted. So we're going to undo that. So hip.r and hip.l were twisted and the shoulders were twisted. So I'm going to hit retarget again. Alright, the shoulder issue was fixed, but uh, because we fixed the twist on these, these got out of whack. That happens often. It didn't happen with the shoulders. As I mentioned, this is an issue that's a bit hard to predict. The only real way to do is try on L. So I'm going to hit the twist fix on the entire ch chains on the left leg and the right leg. Hit retarget. Oh, and now that looks right. Again, we're kind of snapping because of the frame skip. So now we're going to hit frame skip one and hit retarget. This will take a bit of a while because it's retargeting every single frame. You can see the feedback in the console because Python currently does not have access to the Blender progress bar. Hopefully that will happen soon. Um, but now you can see that the retarget went off really nicely. Uh, continue, continue to the next tutorial and I'll showcase even more of the options.